HKM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this packed edition of HCAM News, the ribbon cutting ceremony was held to officially open the public ice rink at the high school outdoor basketball courts. Kathleen Culler will fill you in on Hopkinton's 300th anniversary. Hiller Sports has another week in the books. Kathleen Buckley has the Hopkinton Real Estate Report, and we will take a look at some sites around Hopkinton. But first, I caught up with Town Manager Norman Kamalu to talk about a couple of recent rulings made by the Board of Selectmen. HCAM News recently caught up with Town Manager Norman Kumalu. I asked him about the public hearing held by the Selectmen on whether or not the town should purchase and preserve 40-plus acres of land at 203 Pond Street. Mr. Kumalu explained the next step in the process. The board directed the town manager and town council to review options that will allow the board to exercise its right of first refusal on the property. Based on the options that the board discussed, it is likely, and again this is a decision by a decision to be made by the board, that if they choose to exercise the town's right of first refusal, the matter will be brought to town meeting in May. Mr. Kamalu explained the approved Veterans Services District Agreement and talked about some of the services it would provide veterans around the area. This is a regional services district set up by the towns of Ashland, Hopkinton, Holliston and Medway to provide benefits to our honorable and deserving veterans. Uh, it was set up about three or four years ago with the whole idea of providing this service efficiently. The Veterans Services District Agreement helps provide a number of services to veterans including income support and referral services. The town manager also let us know a couple big tasks coming up. Uh, the two big issues that the board will be dealing with in the coming three months uh, include the FY16 budget as well as uh, the annual town meeting. For more town government information or to see the town calendar, head to hopkingtonma.gov. 300 years ago, it was the year 1715, and it was the year Hopkington was officially incorporated. The 300th Anniversary Committee recently mailed this program guide to all Hopkinton residents. The guide highlights the historic celebration and all the events that will take place throughout the year to celebrate Hopkinton's 300th birthday. Kathleen Culler has more. Town employees and volunteers for Hopkinton's 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee got their first look at the program book this week during an informal gathering at Town Hall. The volunteers and residents took a minute to relax and share a few laughs as they read about the programs planned for the year. Approximately 5,600 program books went to the post office for delivery to all town residents. Members of the 300th Anniversary Celebration Committee are enthusiastic about the book and the year they have planned. This is a roadmap of the events for the celebration year, and we've really gone to a lot of effort to, to make events for everyone, for families, for people interested in history. There are sporting events, parades, there's everything in here. And we want you to treasure this book, to look at it frequently, and find the event that's right for you. Come and join us, help us celebrate Hopkinton's tercentennial. We're also very proud of the quality of the book. Um, we went to a lot of effort to produce something that could be used as a keepsake, and we'd like to thank our sponsors for making that possible. And uh, Jean, where is this gonna actually end up? I'm sure this will be the first thing we put in our time capsule. After 2015, the book will serve as an historical record in town. It will also be kept with the town records in the library and in the Historical Society and the Town Hall. 
At the center of the publication is the calendar of events. The calendar begins with the Tercentennial's kickoff event on January 23rd. The opening ceremonies will be held on January 23rd, which is a Friday, um, at 7 o'clock at the high school, and we are really excited to present the, an award to the first baby born in our new um, century and also present the Boston Post cane to Hopkinton's oldest res resident who has seen us through most of our last century. So that's a very exciting moment for us. We'll have several speakers including Karen Polito, Karen Spilka, Carolyn Dykema, um, Todd Sustari, Norman Kamalo. Um, we'll kick off our events. We'll, we'll be talking about our townwide fitness challenge. We'll be giving a lot of information about our time capsule project that we're very excited about. Um, and in addition, there'll be merchandise available for people who are interested um, that's provided by the Friends Committee as well. After a lot of hard work, volunteers will be ready to celebrate too. Which event are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to all of them. <laughs> Reporting for HCAM News, I'm Kathleen Culler. Thank you, Kathleen. To stay up to date with all the Hopkinton 300th anniversary events and news, stay tuned to our website, hcam.tv, and check out hopkingtonma300.com. For those of you that don't know, Hopkinton once again has a public ice skating rink that has opened and will be open all winter long. It's located at the high school outdoor basketball courts and the ribbon cutting ceremony officially opening the rink was recently held. The Hopkinton public ice rink was officially opened with a ribbon cutting ceremony. In attendance, Parks and Recreations Colleen Allen and Robert Dabinsky, Claire Wright, Hopkinton Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Kathy McLeod, Selectman Todd Sestari, and Parks and Recreations Kevin Nathan. You can see more photos of the event at sceneinhopkinton.org. HCAM News was on the scene to catch up with some of the people responsible for helping with the process. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a great event. It's a great collaboration between the uh, school, the new superintendent, Kathy McLeod, the chairman of uh, the selectmen, Todd Sestari. The town has enabled us to uh, embark on kind of a fun event, uh, something to keep everybody moving in the winter, even on these kind of cold days. So between uh, the water department, the police department, the fire department, the DPW, it's, it, it's really nice to see the, the community all come together with something as great as this. I just wanted to say thank you. It's a wonderful opportunity for, for everybody. It's great to have the school buildings and the school grounds being used by the community. Um, and it's been wonderful. I was here last night late for a meeting and there were some students out um, enjoying it, just having a fun time. And I like that idea, that just the idea of being active in the winter, um, that's what I grew up with. And I think it's just wonderful to have these opportunities along with the, the Department of Recreation, so Parks and Recreation. So thank you. And this weather is pretty ideal for this ice. We were, ha we were happy to get the ice online last Tuesday, and uh, it should be mentioned that the entire idea came about from a conversation I had with Claire Wright, uh, active member in town for a long period of time, and she said, uh, Rob, how about, a, how about a hockey rink or a, a skating rink on the town common? Town common, because of its terrain, wouldn't allow that, but in some collaboration again with Kath and buildings and grounds here in Hopkinton, this is the perfect spot for it. Lights up until 10 o'clock. How long did it take to put the rink fully together? Well, we started right after the leaves started stopped falling. And then uh, as soon as we felt as though, and Colleen Allen from the Park and Rec Department has some experience with the ice, thought it was going to be cold enough to get four or five days of, of continued uh, ice making. We filled it, again, with the uh, help of the uh, fire department and the water department. And we were up and running, like I said, last Tuesday. So probably around four or five days. Well, it seems to be very successful. People seem to be enjoying it a lot, and it'll be another fun winter activity in Hopkinton. Uh, we, we hope so. We hope to go ahead and continue it in many years and months to come. All right, so I'm here with Claire Wright. Claire, you're a skater. You must love this. We love this. Skating is the most wonderful outdoor sport for both adults as well as kids. In fact, in uh, U.S. figure skating, the adult skating community is the fastest growing group of skaters in the country. And uh, so I'm looking forward to sharing this with other people and having people really get bitten by the skating bug. 
Now I saw you doing some impressive tricks out there. How long have you been skating for? <laughs> I skated since I was little, but then probably back in the, about 20 years ago, my husband and I started skating as adults and competing. We competed in adult pairs, and um, so we've had lots and lots of miles. We've traveled uh, with with uh, good skating memories. All right, well, this must be a great activity for you all winter long. I'm going to be here. <laughs> all right. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> For the latest news on the ice rink, including ice conditions and closings, check out the HCAM Facebook page as well as our website HCAM.TV. On Thursday, January 22nd, be part of a live studio audience here at HCAM. Stage 3250 returns and features Linda Conley, who will discuss her research on slavery in Hopkinton, as well as Ashley Olafson, who will talk about the effects media has on young boys and girls. To book your seat, call 508-435-7887 or email stage at hcam.tv. A lot more coming up on HCAM News, including a look at Hiller's Sports and the Hopkinton Real Estate Report. HCAM News, we'll be right back. Thanks to the HEF, HPTA, and 300th Anniversary Committee, we're bringing a program forward to honor alumni of Hopkinton High School. We're looking for nominations, and the criteria include graduated from the high school at least 10 years ago, demonstrated a high level of achievement, and made significant contributions to work, home, community, or volunteer efforts, and exhibited leadership, character, and service. Please visit our website to participating in nominating your HHS grad. Welcome back to HCAM News. 2014 was a very busy year in home sales in the town of Hopkinton. To recap, here is Kathleen Buckley with the Hopkinton Real Estate Report. Hello, I'm Kathleen Buckley here with your Real Estate Market Report for Single Family Homes in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. All of the data that we'll be looking at today comes from our regional multiple listing service MLS PIN. So the volume of home sales, first of all, for the year in 2014, single family homes, we had a total of 208 homes sold and the median sale price of those homes was $582,433 up from last year and the average days it took to get an offer on those homes came in at 52. So we had more home sales compared to 2013, up 12% in fact. The median sale price was up 5% and the days to offer remained exactly the same. All good news for home sellers going forward. You can see here that 2014 is one of only four years in the past 11 years that we had volume over 200 sales. Our median sale price is going back toward the peak of 2006 and the market time is really quite low. All bodes well for sellers in 2015. As far as the highest selling home and the most affordable home in Hopkinton, let's take a look at those two. First of all, the most affordable home, 79 Hayward Street near Lake Maspinock. It sold for $125,000. For that, uh, the new owner has 456 square feet of living space in a home built in 1950 with one bedroom and one full bath. For the people who need a little bit more square footage, 10 Westcott Drive on the shores of Lake Whitehall in town was built in 2004, came on the market in July of 2012 for a price of 3.1 million, and then sold in November of this year finally for $2,050,000. If you are in the market to buy or sell in 2015, please contact your local real estate professional. I'm Kathleen Buckley. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Kathleen. It was a good week for Hiller Hockey. We have highlights from a 3-2 victory over Medway in our latest Hopkinton Sports Report. On Saturday, January 3rd, the Hopkinton Hillers hockey team battled their arch nemesis, the Medway Mustangs. We take you to the second period, where the game was scoreless until Medway's Cole Fisher, just over one minute in, made it one to nothing Mustangs off a beauty of a pass from Kevin Kaufman. 
The Hillers would respond a few minutes later. Goal. Now Carroll with a backhand towards goal. In front, Abbott turns a shot and scores! A rebound puck put in by Will Abbott, and the Hillers have tied it at one. Then with seconds left in the second period, Cam Fisher breaks down the ice, goes five hole, and is denied by Tim McGrath. We enter the third at one apiece. Later in the third, Will Abbott sets up this Jordan Carroll goal. Puck knocked out of the back in front, shot a goal! Jordan Carroll stuffed one in, and the Hillers take a two to one lead. 5.59 left to go in the game. Then just over 90 seconds later, Everett Rolfe breaks away and puts it away, making it three to one with this goal. The Hillers get the W and improve to 4-2-2, two, two, while Medway falls to 4-3. Despite the Mustangs outshooting Hopkinton 36-10, the Hillers pull off a big 3-2 TVL victory over Medway. Will Abbott had one goal and one assist. Jordan Carroll had a goal as well, and Everett Rolfe capped it off with the third Hillers goal of the game. Other scores from this past week. On Tuesday, December 30th, Hopkinton and Holliston tied at one apiece. On Friday, January 2nd, boys basketball lost to Medfield 70 to 48. Girls basketball lost to Medfield in a nail biter 59 to 58. HCAM.TV and CNNHopkinton.org are your homes for the very best in photos from around Hopkinton. We also encourage you or anyone else you may know to send in any Hopkinton related photos you would like to have displayed on HCAM. Here are some of the most recent sites from around Hopkinton. You can find these photos and other photos from around Hopkinton on the HCAM.TV homepage or at sceneinhopkinton.org. In this photo, a group from the Natick Community Organic Farm donated items to the Boston Animal Rescue League in Dedham. Hopkinton 8th grade students Haley Bernardo and Sarah Dunn are included in the group. Hopkinton's oldest resident Sterling Hager celebrated his 103rd birthday recently. Happy birthday Sterling! The women of Hopkinton Coffee Break hit the road for a home for the holidays edition with their daughters. Here you see the beginning steps of building the Hopkinton ice rink. This photo shows the rink when crews first started to fill it in. Several center school site options are on display at the Hopkinton Public Library. They will be on display for the next few weeks, leading up to an info session at the library January 14th at 7 p.m. All are invited to attend. Past, current, and future Hiller hockey players volunteered their time and backs to clean up the ice rink at the Hopkinton High School basketball courts from messy weather. The rink is currently open to the public and will stay open as long as the weather cooperates. Stay tuned to HCAM.TV and our Facebook or Twitter page for rink updates. Hopkinton Engine 2 was on the scene for a gas line struck by utility workers on Ash Street. Fortunately, no one was reported hurt. If you have any photos of anything Hopkinton and want to share them on our site, email them to me, news at hcam.tv. Coming soon on the HCAM airwaves, you can catch a number of events celebrating the 300th birthday of Hopkinton, as well as Hiller's Sports as we are in the midst of the winter sports season. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, our promotions coordinator Courtney has our HCAM insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. The Board of Appeals was filmed as our meeting of the week, and the meeting will air on Sunday, January 16th at 2 p.m. In Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, on Monday, January 19th at 7 p.m., learn about a true New England character with Ted Reinstein. At this one elementary school, a little girl says to Fred, Fred, did you really kiss all those girls in the movie? And Fred says, by Jesus, I sure did, and I enjoyed it too. I turned to a reporter, Leahy said, and I said, there is not another political candidate in America who would have just said that. 
On Tuesday, January 20th at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen will air live on HCAM TV. On HCAM Ed, the Elementary School Building Committee will hold their meeting live and will discuss the site alternatives for the school. In the next of the Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series on Wednesday, January 21st at 11 a.m., learn about pet adoption centers and emergency preparedness for our four-legged friends. At 8 p.m., Mary Ellen Grady shares details of the Sky's the Limit Courtyard Project and all about Hopkinton. Students were given the task of sketching out everything that they would want in that space to make classrooms and to make it usable for clubs and for after school activities and just for hanging out, which is what students had told me mm -hmm. was what they really wanted in Hopkinton. On Thursday, January 22nd at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. We also have live sports with boys basketball versus Millis on Friday, January 23rd at 6.30 p.m. on HCAM TV. The game will then replay at 10 p.m. on HCAM Ed. Do you know someone who wants to stay up to date with the HCAM Insider? If so, have them send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. Don't forget, Friday, January 23rd, 7 p.m. at Hopkinton High School, it's the Hopkinton 300th Anniversary Opening Ceremony. All are invited to attend the kickoff to a year packed with events as we celebrate Hopkinton's 300th birthday. And don't forget, this program guide has been mailed to every Hopkinton resident. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, send it to me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.
me.